Hello, this is Michael Norton speaking from London, England. Today we are going to be placing one of the first dense Plicerona prime taper implants uh, in a patient with a resorbed and fractured upper left central incisor. We haven't seen the patient before. He's been uh, booked on an emergency basis. So we'll initially be doing all the diagnostics uh, and then going straight into surgery. I hope you enjoy uh, this video. So as you can see here, we have a resorbed and fractured root fragment and I've planned for a uh, 4.2 diameter implant. Um, so we took a CBCT first and now we're going to take a prime scan. Once I'm just removing the pontic here, a little bit of brute force. Uh, and in fact, that bonded pontic has been in place for a week or so, and you can see some soft tissue has healed over the top of the root. Uh, we're going to take a prime scan in order to have a surgical stent and immediate shell temporary crown fabricated whilst I'm uh, preparing the patient and beginning the surgery. So here you can see the prime scan impressions uh, being developed. And these digital impressions will be sent uh, directly to the laboratory. Everything can then be designed digitally and printed, and that will be back to us within a short period of time. So I can go ahead and anesthetize uh, the patient, some buccal infiltration and a palatal in uh, injection, of course. And then I'm just going to remove this recently granulated tissue with a punch and I'm going to go ahead and remove the root um, and uh, here we can see the extraction socket. The stent has been returned by the laboratory already so this can be done in about 40 minutes printed stent printed guide and you can see it has a tube to help me uh, guide the drill. The prime taper drills are very similar to the uh, Astrotech EV drills but without the step effect. Um, they're very efficient cutters and with a guide like this where the drills go through the guide um, there's far less scope for the drills going off axis uh, and I find that works very well. So Similar to the uh, Astrotech EV, the drilling system is by numbers. So for a, uh, a prime taper, 4.2 millimeter diameter, such as this one that we're planning, uh, we're using drills one, three, and four. But instead of having separate cortical drills, uh, we use the subsequent drill for the cortical preparation. So in this case, drill number five would have been used for the cortical drill. We have a new mount for the pickup of the implant. So as you can see here, the implant's not wanting to drop off the mount. Uh, it's very effective. Perhaps the most important thing about Prime Taper is the tapered design and the progressive increase in torque. As you can see here, we're achieving a torque in the range of 35 uh, to 40 Newton centimeters, I think 37 there. It's a very smooth insertion uh, of the implant. It draws very nicely into the osteotomy. In this case, we're going to temporize the implant using a direct abutment. And the shell temporary crown that was fabricated whilst I was doing the surgery uh, can then be used and relined over this. The temporary abutments um, in prime taper are uh, tightened to 15 Newton centimeters as uh, we do with the Astrotech EV because this implant benefits from the same conical 11 degree um, connection uh, that all Astrotech implants uh, have benefited from. Little plastic cap which will form the uh, internal fit surface of the temporary crown and here you see we have a little uh, locating jig with the temporary crown in place and that's gone straight over uh, because the uh, surgical guide 
and the shell temporary have been fabricated digitally uh, in such a way that that should do so. I'm just going to fill the shell temporary crown with some light cured acrylic with specific Vita shades so we can build it up uh, incrementally, uh, filling the shell temporary crown with the liquid acrylic. And then we're going to seat that uh, over the plastic uh, cap, the direct abutment healing cap, uh, and cure it. So we just give that a little wash. Doesn't have to be dry. Acrylic bonds very well to the plastic cap. And here you can see we're just curing that, holding the shell temporary crown in place with the little location jig. An initial set, remove the excess from the interproximal regions because we don't want to end up locking that temporary crown into place. Then we can remove the jig, remove the palatal excess, any further interproximal excess before we give it a final cure. And then we can just pop that temporary crown off and finish contouring and shaping the crown uh, out of the mouth to make sure that we get a really optimal uh, emergence profile that'll help direct the healing of the soft tissues. In this particular case, the gingival zenith is a little high, so I'm going to remove some of the acrylic in that area in the hope that over the healing period, that soft tissue might come down into the under contoured zones that I'm creating here. Just shaping the palatal surface. We want this clear of occlusal and guidance contacts, of course. Nice, smooth finish. well adapted to the soft tissues, clear of the occlusion. And then having polished it, we use, in this case, a very small sparing amount of temporary uh, cement because the little plastic cap fits quite well uh, onto these direct abutments. And that can be inserted and held in place while the cement sets. And that's it. Here you see the crown in place, clear of the occlusion, and a very happy patient. Quite a good shade match uh, because, of course, it was a lab-made shell temporary. And that completes the case.